Hi, I think my dog will let me make one more video before we go for our walk today. Um, so I'm just trying to keep adding more examples. And uh, so here, I, they're already listed in here and I thought I would go through them. I kind of liked um, using maple on the last section. So I'll just um, keep using maple in this section. Um, so these are, this is chapter six. We are switching to continuous random variables. Continuous random variables are um, defined over a support that uh, of all of like real numbers. So now I don't have X, like for example, uh, the time a car breaks down is not exactly one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour. So um, now it's like uh, the time it takes to fix um, this car is a random variable whose support is just greater than zero. It's going to be some time greater than zero. It's not, again, it's just this interval of times, and which is why it's making it continuous. It's a smooth curve, and I'm not defined at these nice discrete points. So um, this function, this is called a probability density function, is defined over that interval. And um, again, the difference is I'm not going to be summing defined probabilities because I'm not talking about a function described at discrete points. This guy is defined over an interval. So now we're switching to integration to find probabilities. So um, a certain car breaks down the time that it takes to fix it in hours is a random variable. We should say random variable x with probability density function f of x equals c e to the negative 3x, zero otherwise. Um, so everywhere else not on this interval, the probability is zero. So for negative values, it's zero. Um, first, I'm supposed to find the value c that makes this a valid function. Um, to be a valid probability mass function, uh, f of x has to be uh, greater than or equal to zero for all x's, which means if you graph it, it has to sit above the x-axis. And the integral of f of x over x's support uh, must integrate to 1. If not, then you don't have a valid probability density function. So don't forget sometimes to check those things. I usually, again, when I write in my function, that's one of the first things I check. So let's find the value c that makes f of x a legal function. So um, I want to integrate. Well, first let's define f of x. Um, it's c times exp to the negative 3 times x. Okay, so let's integrate f of x from x equals 0 to infinity, which you probably remember how to do by hand, but right now I'm just using maple to make it uh, a little bit um, quicker for the video. Um, I need this integral to be equal to 1, so c must be equal to 3 then. So f of x... Um, that's what f of x looks like. And we can integrate now, um, let's say, uh, subs c equal to 3 into f of x. Let's make that my new f of x, which, okay, maybe that was redundant code, but let's make sure he's valid. So if I integrate f of x from x equals 0 to infinity, I should get 1. So everything's legal. c is 3. Okay, nice. Um, Find the probability that when this car breaks down, it, take, it takes at most 30 minutes to fix it. At most 30 minutes. So I uh, want the area under the curve up until 30 minutes. And this was in, uh, the time was in, uh, was in hours. So uh, I want to go up to a half an hour then. 30 minutes is a half an hour. So uh, integrate f of x at most a half hour. Oops, one half. So this is probably it takes at most a half hour to fix the car. Oops, I should have remembered. So that's about 78% of the time. Okay, maybe we should have looked at a graph of this. Let's plot uh, f of x from x equals 0 to, I don't know, let's just go to 5 for now. You know what an exponential looks like, so it's not surprising this graph we get. Okay, so here's our graph. And what we were finding was the probability it lasted at, at, at most a half hour, so it was really the, the area under the curve right here up to a half. If you imagine taking all that area, that's about 
uh, 78% of the area of the whole curve, which is 1. Okay, so we found that. On average, what is the expected amount of time to fix um, the tire? So expected value is the same definition we use for discrete, except we integrate. So integrate f of x times x over the support. And so on average, it takes a third of an hour to fix the flat. Um, we could also find um, variance. That's just going to be integrate f of x times x minus mu uh, minus mu squared from x equals 0 to infinity. So there's the variance. Standard deviation is the square root, so um, expected amount of time is a third hour. Standard deviation, a third hour. So there's your first continuous. Only big difference, I think, from this in Chapter 5 is that we are um, integrating now. Okay, so here's another one. Yeah, I took these examples out of Section 6.1 uh, homework problems. So, the lifetime of a tire selected at a tire shop. Was this one about tires, too? No, time to fix a breakdown. Okay, this is about tires. The lifetime of a tire at a used tire shop is 10,000 X miles, where X is a random variable and here's its density function, otherwise zero. So we know it's going to last somewhere between, it's only given us 10,000 to 20,000 miles a used tire. So that's just what they've modeled it to be. So what percentage of tires of the shop last fewer than 15,000 hours? So I want to integrate this function between um, 1 and 1.5. We can make sure f of x is legal, but it is. They integrate f of x from x equal 1 to 2. That's its support. And what's the probability the tire lasts at most? 15,000 miles. Yeah, 1.5 is what I want. And that's two thirds. So two thirds of the area under that curve are from one to 1.5. Uh, what percentage of those having lifetimes fewer than 15,000 miles last between 10 and 12,500? 12, 12, so this is a uh, conditional. So this is very nice. We're using properties we learned back in chapter three. So I'm trying to find the probability that uh, x is between one and 1.25 given x is less than 1.5. So we already found probability x is less, oops, sorry, I did greater than, didn't I? We already found the probability x is less than 1.5. So now what we're going to do is find, um, this is just the probability of one less than uh, x less than 1.25 you know and less x than 1.5 which is the same divided by probability x is less than 1.5 so now all i need to do is find this numerator and divide by what we already had calculated so let's just do that so it's really well we'll use this line well no because if you're just reading the worksheet this is what we're doing. This is probably x is between 1 and 1.25. One divided by that 60% of the time. So given I know it's going to last less than 1.5 hours, what's the probability it lasts between 1? Oops, we're not even doing hours, doing miles. Given that I know it lasts le less than 15,000, what's the probability it lasts between 1 and 12,500? So um, more than half a chance if it lasts less than 15,000 it's going to last in that smaller interval from 1 to 1.25. Interesting. Um, last, I thought I would do um, law of unconscious statisticians. So I actually use the same density function as um, the last example. Let x be the radius of a circle. So imagine you have a circle just that, uh, you know, half the length there of the diameter. And I'm letting this be um, the length of the radius anywhere between 1 and 2 inches. And we already know this is a valid density function. I just checked it. So what's the expected 
area of the circle. I mean, we could just find expected radius of the circle, in fact. We already have f of x defined, right? Yeah, what's the expected radius? So expected radius is um, integrate f of x times x from x equal 1 to 2. Expected radius would be, um, well, I should evaluate that, right? Eval f, let's see, 1.39 inches. But what about the area? So let's go up here. Uh, area of a circle is uh, pi times r squared, which is pi times x squared in our random variable language. So I want to find uh, expected value of pi times x squared. But I learned in the expected value chapter, I'm allowed to bring out a constant. So this is pi times expected value of x squared. And <clears throat> I can find x squared with the law of the unconscious statistician. So expected area. Uh, expected area equals pi <clears throat> times integral of f of x times x squared from x equal 1 to 2. And let's just be smart and put an eval f on here. So expected area should be 2 pi. Um, okay, does that, I, well, I hope that makes sense. It's hard, yeah, I'm talking to you, but you don't get to answer, so. Um, does the difference make sense? Um, law of unconscious statistician lets me find expected value of a function of x, not just expected value of x. So um, it's kind of nice. And don't be fooled. I mean, I saw a few people do this on my in-class. Expected value of x squared is not equal to, in general, expected value of x squared. So you couldn't just say expected value of x squared and take the square out. So a lot of people were finding this area by saying, oh, I know uh, expected radius is 2 ln of 2, and then just taking 2 ln of 2, putting in here, squaring it, multiplied by pi, you don't get the same thing. And that's the problem. You have to be very careful to take expected value of that function and not think that um, expected value of x squared is expected value of x squared, because they're not necessarily the same, probably not the same in general. Okay, so that is uh, really 6163, and uh, I will stop here.